Good morning. Today is just a review day before we move on. Um, the first thing that we are going to review is our subtraction with regrouping. So for example, if we have 386 minus 129, the very, very first thing that we need to practice doing is putting it into our chart. Ms. Corbin is going to turn her page. I'm going to do my quick chart. We should all be pretty good about this. Remember, even if we are doing it on the computer, we still should be writing our work on our paper. But it's just best practices and we make less mistakes. So the first thing, and I'm going to rewrite my problem up here. So we can, oops, see, 386 minus 129. The first thing that I saw some confusion on is how to bring that into your chart. Remember, with this one, we've got to make sure that we start with our last number. Also, make sure your biggest number is on top, especially if it's subtraction. So let's go ahead and bring our biggest number down. So it's 6, 8, 3 hundreds, and then we put our next number, 9 ones, and it helps if you say it, and that will help you remember, especially when we review expanded form. Two tens, one hundred. Put our subtraction sign here. Draw our line. Now, once we get it set up, we want to make sure that we always ask ourselves, if can I take away nine from six? And if the answer is no, then we bought got to borrow in a group. Now, on paper, it's a little bit easier to show this. So we borrow from our tens, we change it to a seven, and we change this to a sixteen. We've added our ted ones over here. I want to show you what that looks like in um, picture form. So we have three hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tens, six ones. Now, so what we just did here is we took a 10 and we broke it into 10 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's what we're showing right here. So now, if we were correct, we should have 7 tens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, Ms. Corbin didn't write enough tens. Now we have eight, we had eight tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We took away one, so we have seven, and we should have 16 ones. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So when we're doing it on paper, so we don't have to draw it out for the big numbers, I need you to remember what we're doing is we're taking one of the tens and we're breaking it into ten ones. Now we can subtract. So 16 minus nine, and if you want it to cross out, you can, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means we have seven ones. Cross out two more tens. That means we have five. If I have three, can I take away one? Yes. So that's 257. Let's try another one with the pictures. I want to try it with the pictures. So our next problem is, let's see, 412 minus 189. Draw your chart. Now once you get the bigger numbers, it's harder to draw, so that's why we want to make sure that you understand what you're doing, so you can just do it with numbers. Okay, so now I'm going to draw my picture. 400, 1, 2, 3, 4, one, ten, two ones. Now since it's subtraction, I'm crossing out and I don't draw my bottom number. Now let's put it over here. Remember, always start with our ones. So it's two ones, one ten, four hundreds. Our second number, we always want to start with our big number in subtraction. Nine ones, eight tens, one hundred. Subtract. Okay, so looking at our picture, can we take away 9? Nope. So then we got to cross that one out, and then we got to draw 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we've got to make this match. That means now I have zero tens. I don't have any tens left. And now I have 12 ones. Cross out my nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now that means I have three ones left. Uh-oh, I don't have any tens. So that means I need to borrow again. That means I need to break down a hundred. So there are 10 tens in 100. So I'm breaking this down. And now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that means now I have three hundreds. And then I have one ten. So I just need to change that to a 10. Cross out 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now I have two tens left. And I have three hundreds. Okay, now I want to review, I'm going to draw my line, I want to review our fa fact, factors. And for your factors, remember you want to have your some sort of times table. This is the one that I've shown you, um, I can give it to you again. Math tables is fun, backslash op, I'm going to put it on our webpage. And what we like about this one is it helps us see exactly. So we want to find the factors of 24. So remember, this is how we're going to write it. And we always start with 1. So we're always going to do 1 times 24, always. Now the next one is we're going to look for the 2. So I come to the 2, and I look. Do I have any 24s? I do. 2 goes on this side. 12 goes on this side because it's going to help us write our factors. So let's look for 3. Is there anything times 3 that gives me 24? Yes. It's 3 times 8. Okay, now let's look at 4. Is there anything times 4 that gives me 24? Yes. It's 4 times 6. Now it's important to go in order so you don't miss any because we want to put them in order. Nope, we hit 25. Let's try 6. Yes, but look, we already have 4 and 6. So that means we get a stop. So then you draw your arrow to help you remember how to draw it. So our factors are, we just go in order, follow your arrow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. All right, and now our factor pairs. If it, asks, if it asks for factor pairs, now remember factors means that all of these numbers, if I multiply them, are going to give me 24. Fact, oops, factor pairs means they have to be together. So this would be 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. So we are going to be practicing both of these today um, during math. One more thing I want to, a little confusion when we had it on, you don't have to write this down, I just want you to watch. When we're putting it in the chart and showing it, we do the same thing. So we have the 6, the 8, and the 3. And then we have the 9, the 2, and the 1. And watch how we show it this one. We can't cross out on here, so we have to just put it up here. So this changes to 7, and this changes to 16. Just like we did in our paper. I'm going to show your paper. And you see right here, we have our 7 and our 16, so this is how we show it in our box. And then we once, if we know we have our numbers up here, we know that we're this has changed. Miss Corbin has not figured out how to make those cross out yet. So this is where you put your regrouping up here that you showed on your paper right here. Because remember, the expectation is you write it on the paper, and then you put it into your chart. That is our expectation.